Hi and welcome to the lesson on the mathematics of circular motion. Uh, we've been doing a lot of uh, thinking about objects moving in a circle and we had a formula that we derived and we found that the formula was F equals MV squared over R where M is the mass of that object that's moving around in, in kilograms. Uh, the V was actually the speed, and you remember the speed was at right angles or tangent to the right angles to the radius or tangent to the circle, and R uh, was this radius, this, the distance. Um, how does this compare with our regular formula? This is F net equals MA. Well, one thing you might notice is that this says F net, and I don't know if we've really talked about what kind of force that is, but I'm going to tell you right now, this is actually F net. Okay, so this F net equals MA is for all types of motion. So I'm kind of sort of doing a Venn diagram here. And then if inside of there, if we said there is a type of motion called circular uh, and then I would go over here, we could have sort of a special version of it, and we could say F net is equal to MV squared over R. You'll find that sometimes some uh, textbooks, instead of saying F net, they might say FC equals MV squared over R. This is the same. This means the same thing. FC just is talking about it is going in a circle. Uh, it is centripetal or a circular force. And I just want to remind you that when you do diagrams, uh, this centripetal force isn't a force. It's the sum of all the forces, okay, if that makes sense to you. And moving on, if we talked about the fact that the object is accelerating when it's moving in a circle. So when it's moving in a circle, it is always accelerating towards the center. So if we are to compare these two, well, if we have F net equals MA, and we have F net, maybe I'll say F net centripetal, is equal to MV squared over R, it's not too hard to see that this A is actually the same thing as V squared over R. So ta-da, we can come up with, say, that when the acceleration is centripetal, maybe I'll do A subscript C, or, or circular, that acceleration is V squared over R, where V is the speed in meters per second, and R is the radius in meters. Okay, now another uh, useful idea or formula was that the speed when something's moving in a circle remember it was like the distance divided by the time and that distance was one circumference which was 2 pi r and the time for one revolution is the period right so that's the period uh, equals time for one revolution or cycle so that is another formula that will come up every once in a while. Okay, let's look at the first uh, sample here. It has a car that's moving around a circle. I think it's always a good idea to draw a little, at least some semblance of a diagram here. So here is the car. It's going around a circle. Um, it's 900 kilograms, so that would be the mass of the car. And it's moving at 10 meters per second, so that would be, well, tangent to the circle. Here's my speed is equal to 10 meters per second. And the radius of the circle, well, the radius, I have to think, where is the center? Maybe about here is the center. So the radius would be this here is 25 meters. Determine the acceleration and the net force acting on the on the car. So we want to know the acceleration and we want to know the net force acting on the car. Well, we could right away say we know this F net business is equal to uh, mv squared over r. And we know that a is equal to v squared over r. Uh, why don't we just use the acceleration one first? We can say the velocity is 10 or sorry, the speed is 10, the velocity is 10, but it's also changing direction all the time, divided by the radius, which is 25, 
So 100 divided by 25 is going to be equal to 4 meters per second squared. Now what's the direction that it's going? It's a little bit hard to talk about because it's always changing, but the direction of the acceleration, here maybe I'll make this here, is always towards the center of the circle. This is the acceleration towards the center. So I'm going to write towards center. Now if I go F net, uh, to figure out f net, I could use my mv squared over r, but isn't it much simpler to say that f net is equal to mass times acceleration? So the mass was 900 and the acceleration was 4. So 4 times 900 is 3600 newtons. And again, it's towards the center. There we go. Sample number 2 is a bucket of water is being attached and is being spun around. So again, this would be kind of a diagram of its motion here. It's at the top of it. So again, we're thinking it is accelerating this way. So um, if we consider the net force, the net force would have to be downwards, right? And if we think of a, a free body diagram, well, we actually have one there, we're going to have a force of gravity, maybe I'll draw it like this, force of gravity downwards, and we're going to have a tension force downwards. Now I know here they go F tens, I just use a capital T. So the important thing to think about is that when it's at the top of that loop, it is accelerating towards the center. So in other words, F net has to be downwards. So the sum of these two forces, the force of gravity and the tension force, is going to be equal to the net force. So F net is going to be equal to those two added together. Uh, let's see what we can figure out first. Well, we have the mass, we have a radius, we have a speed. If acceleration is equal to V squared over R, then it's simply a matter of 3 squared divided by 0 0.8. So we get an answer of, here I'll put it, 11.25 meters per second squared. What direction would we say? Well, I, I think we can do better than just saying towards the center. I, I think we can say down. So which direction will the F net be? It will also be down. These two will always be the same direction. The direction that something is accelerating is going to be the same thing as the direction of the net force. So to figure out F net, F net is equal to M times A. So really I'm taking my 2 kilograms and I'm multiplying that times 11.25. And so I'll get an answer of uh, 22.5 newtons downwards. Okay, so looking at my diagrams I did here before, this is 22.5 newtons downwards. In other words, these two should add up to that. Which of force of gravity and tension can I figure out? Well, the force of gravity is equal to m times g, so that will be 2 kilograms times 9.8. So that would be equal to 19.6 newtons. So I'll put this 19.6 newtons in here. And that is down as well. So if I want to solve for tension, this is 19.6. Uh, I think I didn't draw my diagram very well. And in fact, that I wrote force of gravity as a small arrow and tension as a larger arrow. Uh, I'm just going to make some space here. So if I think, oh, um, 19... Uh, the, the tension is going to be how much uh, do I need to add to 19.6 to get to, to 22.5. In other words, in this case, if I solve for tension, I can say it's going to be the force of gravity minus the net force. So that would be equal to 19, oops, the other way around, the, the net force minus the force of gravity. So how much more do I need to add to this so that these two numbers together add up to 225? So I need to subtract 22.5 minus 19.6. And then I'll get an answer of, I think it's 2.9 newtons. So putting a 2.9 here, newtons, and I'll say downwards. 
Um, you know, one thing interesting to consider is if I were to speed things up a bit, if I was to swing this faster, then the force of gravity is not going to change, but my um, my F net would be increasing because F net uh, in this case is going to be equal to mv squared over r. So if I increase the velocity, this is also going to increase. And so if I increase how fast I'm swinging it, the tension is going to increase. And you can imagine if you're swinging a pail of water around and you start swinging it faster, it's going to pull harder. That tension is going to be higher. So if I swing it slower, the tension will get less and less. The minimum speed that I could spin it at, and this question comes up a little bit here, so I'm just going to erase this so I can make a note for you and hopefully you have a spot you can still write it. I'm going to say, uh, how about we write a note by saying note. Uh, at minimum speed, minimum speed. Um, so this is the speed in which you can just barely still make the loop. So it's over here, like this. Uh, I'll have the force of gravity. What's the smallest the tension could be? Well, the tension could be zero. Tension equals zero newtons. Uh, and I could say object. Uh, well, the only force is a acting on it is the force of gravity, and that's actually our definition of a projectile. Object is a projectile at top of loop. So it, when it's a projectile, in other words, it's going to be accelerating uh, a is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared down. So it's pretty easy to figure out some things um, at that minimum speed. Looking at sample question number three. Here we have something at the bottom of the loop. So here is the object. Here is the center of the, of the circular motion. So in other words, all the forces added up together have to be an up arrow. I have a down arrow of force of gravity and an up arrow. So my up arrow has to be longer. It has to be this much longer. So in other words, my normal force in this case is going to be equal to F net plus Fg. Uh, looking at my numbers here, my acceleration is going to be equal to my V squared over R. So that will be 30 squared. That's so what? 900 divided by 39. So that would work out to 23. Now, uh, probably more important than being able to divide on your calculator is to think about which direction is the acceleration. If it is at the bottom of the circle, it's always accelerating towards the center. So in this case, the acceleration will be up. F net, well, that's equal to m times a. Maybe I'll write that down here. F net is m times a. So in other words, it'll be 600 times that 23. And I think it was 23.07 or something. So my answer for that is uh, 13,846. So 13,846, the Newton's already written for me. And the direction of that F net will also be up. Okay. Now the force of gravity pretty straightforward, is equal to m times g. So I'm going to say 600 times 9.8. So my answer for that one is 5,880. So I'll write that in over here, 5,880. I'll put the units in here, and this will be downwards. Not as critical to say down, because I do have an arrow going down. Now, this is the key, right, is to figure out now that the normal force is going to be equal to this F net downwards and this F uh, force of gravity, or sorry, that F net upwards and that force of gravity downwards, I'm going to have to add the two together. So when I add those two together, I get uh, 19,000. 726 newtons up. So another way to think of it is this normal force here has to 
first of all be as equal to the force of gravity just to cancel it out but then the fact that now it has to accelerate it that this extra amount that it has to go would be enough to provide that net force to accelerate it upwards so that's where the normal force at the bottom of this loop so if you're in that roller coaster it actually kind of feels heavier to you so our feeling of something is you know uh, that you feel weighty, that you feel heavier, it's because your normal force has increased on the bottom of that loop because it has to accelerate you upwards. Kind of reminds me of that those elevator questions that we used to do in grade 11, where if we were accelerating upwards, we'd have a larger normal force than the force of gravity. Okay, let's do our last question here. And um, this one might be one that we have to talk in class because it's a little bit hard to describe this barrel ride at an amusement park because I'm not sure how many people have actually experienced this. So the idea is you've got this big barrel here and to begin with it has a floor. So to begin with there is a floor and there is a person that here is standing on the floor. They're happy. I'll try to do a happy face there. They're happy because they're in an amusement park. Um, the the floor, the, the side of the wall would be made out of some type of rough material. I'll put their head back on there. Some kind of rough material that has a lot of friction and it's important for our story. Uh, once you're in there, now it starts to spin. So it starts moving. It starts spinning faster and faster. Once it's been spinning for a while, then the bottom of this barrel kind of disappears. The floor drops off and you're like freaking out because you're suspended off the ground um, and this feeling that the wall is pushing on you. Okay, so you are now moving in a, a circle. The center of your motion would be this center right here. So if I consider like here is you, here's you, and you're kind of moving this way, and there's the center, uh, your F net is going to be towards the center of the circle. If I draw a free body diagram, oh, in fact, they've driven a free, draw, di free body diagram, you can see that you're going to have a force of friction upwards and a force of gravity downwards. And the force of friction between you and that rug is what's keeping you from sliding down once the floor disappears. The normal force is actually the same thing as the F net in this case, because it's the only force that's moving to the right. So uh, once we figure out F net, we can put that in for the normal force. Okay, uh, an another added complication in this one is that they make you work for velocity a little bit in this case. So if I read this carefully, it says, well, they make you work in a few ways. Here's, they give you the diameter. So if that's the diameter, then the radius is going to be equal to half of that, 3.74 divided by 2, which is 1.87 meters. Um, it makes a revolution every 1.65 seconds. Well, that's, if you recall, that's what period is. Period is how long it takes in seconds to do one revolution. So the period is 1.65. Determine the velocity. Okay, so remember earlier on we said velocity or, or speed. The, the velocity we can just determine the magnitude of it because the direction is changing all the time. It's going to be 2 pi r divided by t. So you're going to put that radius and put that period in there. And the answer that we get for velocity I think is a 7.12 meters per second. So I'll go and put that over here, 7.12 in meters per second. Now, uh, the acceleration is v squared over r. So when you do that, you get 27.1. And the direction for that will be, well, for our current diagram, would be to the right. Because in our picture, we are on the left side of that thing. So the f net will also be to the right. When I multiply 27.1 multiplied by their mass, I get 1703 newtons to the right. So like I said before, since the F net has to be to the right, and this is the only force that moves to the right, the normal force will be the same thing as the net force. The force of gravity is straightforward. We say force of gravity is equal to m times g. So for that one, we're going to get 615, and that's down. And in order for, in order for these three forces, uh, force of friction, normal force, and force of gravity, to add up to F net to the right, that means the up force has to cancel the down force. So the force of friction in this case is 615 newtons up. I got that little cursor thing in there. Okay, so I hope that uh, helped you. There is a little uh, sheet that follows this, the mathematics of circular motion, and there is a QR code to um, 
to find the answer sheet for that. And please don't forget to do your mops. So there, this one goes with sublevel number five. Okay, thanks. I'll see you in class.